Hello there and welcome to another video on this channel. And this time we'll take a look at private AKS clusters, so Azure Kubernetes service clusters, and some of the DNS options around the API server. A private AKS cluster is just a Kubernetes cluster that has the API server listening on a private IP in your own controlled network, so in your virtual network in Azure in this case. And of course, we have to find a way to translate the name of the API server, which is given by Microsoft, by Azure, to the API server. We have to translate that name into a private IP through some form of DNS. Now, the first option is the system option, and that is the use of a private DNS zone that gets created for you in the node resource group. And we'll look at that node resource group later in the examples. The uh, name of the API server, of course, then gets an A record in that DNS zone. And that DNS zone is then associated with the virtual network that contains your AKS cluster. And of course, other systems that are in that same virtual network will be able to resolve the name into an IP. That's the first option. Now, the second option is that you're saying, well, I do not want a private DNS zone or the non option, basically. Um, here in this case, you still need to have translation of a name to a private IP, but instead of using a private DNS zone, public DNS is used. So Microsoft creates a name for your API server. That name is resolvable by a public DNS servers to a private IP. So of course, your system that you to talk to your AKS cluster, they still need to be on that private network, of course. That's a very easy option if you don't want to be busy with private DNS or integrate private DNS into your own DNS uh, system, for example. That's a very easy option uh, to use. Now, do know that that is in preview today. Now, the third option is basically a custom option where you use an existing private DNS zone. And that is something that often is done, of course, in enterprise scenarios where you have virtual networks that use custom DNS servers. And these custom DNS servers have to be integrated with private DNS zones on a, let's say, global level. In that case, you don't want these DNS zones to be created randomly, like in the first option with system. Now, you're going to create this private DNS zone already somewhere in a central networking subscription or something like that. And then make sure that when you deploy an AKS cluster, that the record is registered in that already existing DNS zone that's integrated with your own custom um, managed DNS servers. We will not look at the third option today. We will take a look at option one and two. Here we are inside the BICEP template to deploy an AKS cluster. And the only thing I've done here is to use the property enabled private cluster and set that to true. That's enough to make the AKS cluster a private cluster. But the important thing is to know what does this do. Let's take a look. This is the result of the AKS cluster creation with that private link enabled attribute. The API server address takes the name of my cluster, which I aptly called AKS cluster, as you can see over here. Then it has some uh, random uh, naming and then private link dot West Europe and so on. What you can see here already is that AKS works a bit differently from, for example, something like an Azure app service where you don't directly see the private link name in the resource. You see the regular name of your web app and that gets translated or that gets resolved to a private link C name by the DNS servers that you query. So here there is no regular name that you'll use to go to your AKS server privately. You'll use the private link uh, name or address directly. So how do we resolve this private link name to a private IP address? Well, what Microsoft is doing in the default situation, right, is it will create a private DNS zone in the resource group that is behind your cluster. And that resource group typically starts with MC underscore, but you can change the name of that group if you want. So the private DNS zone is automatically created 
in this resource group. And if I click on the private DNS zone, you can indeed see that there's a record in there that represents our API server and that the address of the API server is 10.50.1.4. Now, of course, if you want to use a client and that client is going to use kubectl or kubectl to interact with the API server, you need to be able to resolve this name to this IP address. Now, how do we do that? Well, one of the ways to do that is to make sure that your client is in a virtual network that is associated with this private DNS zone. And in this case, by default, what Microsoft is doing here or the AKS creation is doing is it actually does a virtual network link to the virtual network that our AKS cluster uses. So that's there automatically for you, AKS VNet. And indeed, when I click on this AKS VNet and I see my connected devices, there is a network interface in that VNet that starts with Cube API server that got created for you. And indeed, that matches the 10.50.1.4 address that you saw in the A record in the private DNS zone. If you've looked at my previous videos, for example, I have one about Azure App Service and private link, you know that this here, this creation of this network interface is of course the result of a private endpoint. So if you go back to the resource group we just talked about, You'll also see that there's a private endpoint in that resource group that represents the Cube API server. And what Microsoft is doing, it is using private link to actually link the API server that is under their control. They manage that server. You don't have control over that API server. But via the private link service, they make sure that you can reach the API server via this private endpoint. Let's check if this actually works. So I'm now on a VM, an Ubuntu system that's in the same VNet as my AKS cluster. And that VNet is associated with that private DNS zone. So the uh, I should be able to resolve this name to an IP address. So I'm just going to use ping for this. And it, what we see is indeed that we can resolve it to 10.50.1.4, which is exactly uh, matching with the uh, private endpoint and network interface that is used for my uh, API server. Now there's no response because the, the API server does not respond to ping requests. So great, we know that this works. That also means that we can connect to the cluster using something like kubectl. To connect to the API server, we first of course need to get credentials. So I'm using the Azure CLI here. I already did a AZ login to log in with the correct credentials. And now I'm getting the credentials to my AKS cluster. I know the name of the cluster and the resource group, so I can just use this command. When I do this, uh, of course, I will have a cube config file. If I go to the cube folder, you of course can see there that there's a config file. If we take a look at the config file, not the uh, catif file or whatever I was typing there, uh, you can see that indeed somewhere in that config file, there's a server field. And the server field, of course, uses that name that we talked about earlier to resolve to that private IP address of the cluster. So if I'm now doing something like uh, kubectl and then get nodes, for instance, I should be able to connect to the API server and retrieve the number of nodes in my cluster, which is in my case, to conserve costs, only one node. So great, this works. Now be aware that if you are going to do, for example, deployments of, let's say, applications and so on to this cluster using Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, you will, of course, need an Azure DevOps agent in this VNet as well, or a GitHub runner in this VNet, because, of course, these systems, they need to be able to connect to the private API server as well. So keep that in mind, uh, you won't be able to use the public agents or runners. Now, what if you are not on the VNet and you still want to run a command on your AKS cluster that is using a private API server? What can you do here? Well, here I went on the micro documentation in the create a private cluster documentation. And there's actually a way to use what we call the AKS run command, right? Now to use the AKS run command, which is in preview today, you first have to uh, register a, a feature as you can see uh, over here. Then you have to wait a few minutes until that feature is registered. And then you just re-register the Microsoft container service feature. What you can then do is use the AZ AKS command invoke um, 
Azure CLI command to run a command on that private cluster. Let's take a look how that works. The only thing you need to do is to use the AZ AKS command invoke as we just talked about. You just also specify your resource group and then the name of your cluster and then with dash C you give the command you want to run. Now I will do that in my case but you'll see that there's a small issue. Well, small issue, a big issue because it won't work. If I run this command you will see that yeah indeed today the run command is not supported when you have both private cluster and the azure active directory integration enabled and i have aad integration enabled on my cluster so sadly that doesn't work so i will have to use a client that's in the vnet that can resolve the name properly and connect to that private endpoint you now know what happens when you enable this option here and only this option, enable private cluster true. That's, let's say, the default way of working. Now, if you enable a combination of these three options, so enable private cluster true, but you also turn off the private DNS zone creation and you turn on the creation of a public fully qualified domain name, what you get here is a name that will be resolvable by public DNS servers to the private IP. Now for this to work, you have to make sure that you use the API version of 2021.0501 at the, as the lowest one. So that's the current one that, that implements uh, this. You see some squiggly lines in my case here because probably the API documentation is not up to date yet, but this will deploy properly. Now let's see what happens when we deploy this template. After deployment, the API server address of my AKS cluster looks like this. So the name of my cluster, AKS cluster, some randomness, and then just HCP West Europe, etc. There is no private link here in this case. Now let's see what happens when I try to ping to this address from my local PC at home. So my local PC has no connection whatsoever to the private network, the virtual network in Azure. So here we are on my local PC and let's ping that address uh, of the uh, API server. And what you see now here is this is a public name, so resolvable by public DNS servers, right? Uh, but what I get back is indeed the private IP of my API server, which is enabled by a private endpoint in my network. So 10.50.1.4. I already obtained my credentials to the cluster. So if we go to the .cube folder, and there I'm going to do a cat of the uh, config uh, file. What you should see there is that indeed now the URL is this one, so without private link. So let's copy this and let's try to uh, just clear this out and ping this address here, right? So this also works because of course, the internal DNS servers that, that are connected to the DNet on Azure, they can also resolve public DNS names and that name that we are using here is resolving as we have seen to this private IP address. Now, I already got my credentials to the cluster because I've just shown you the kube config. And remember, we do this with something like AZ AKS get credentials. So now if I'm just doing a kubectl and then get nodes, for instance, I should be able to connect to that private API endpoint using that public DNS name and getting all this information about my nodes here. Now, of course, this does not change anything about things like Azure DevOps agents or GitHub runners. They still need line of sight. They still need access to that private IP. So you still need to deploy them in the network, but you don't have to worry now about things like a private DNS zone. Is my VNet connected to the private DNS zone? Do I have my own DNS server that I use in the company? Are they linked to this private DNS zone in some way? No, this is just a public DNS name that as long as public names are resolvable, you can resolve this to a private IP and you can reach your API server as long as you're on the network that gives you a line of sight to that private IP. So this is the second option. And in some ways I prefer this one if you don't want to be bothered with these private DNS zones and so on. This is actually uh, quite a nice option to use. Now remember, 
This option today at the time of recording, which is the 25th of June 2021, this option is still in preview. And just to drive home the point, we're now back in the resource group that's backing my, or that's behind my AKS cluster, the MC underscore resource group. And in the previous deployment, you have seen that there was a private DNS zone here for the private link domain that is now not here. Of course, we still need to have a private endpoint, which results in a network interface that gives me the private IP to connect to the API server maintained by Microsoft, but the actual private IP is linked to a public DNS name as you have seen before. So a little bit less complicated without these private DNS zones. You have now seen the first two options in action. So the system option with private DNS and then the non option using public DNS. In a next video, we will take a look at how to use an existing private DNS zone. I hope you liked this one. If you have questions, do drop them in the comments and see you for another one soon. Bye bye.